He's the man with everything. Bye. For the last 40 years, we've watched him seduce some of the world's most beautiful women. The things I do for him. Drive the world's best cars, play with the best gadgets, and save the world at least, well, 19 times. Thank you very much. He's the one all the boys want to be, and all the girls want to get with. Yes, the world's best secret agent is back. Who are you? My name's Bond. James Bond. Bond. James Bond. My friends call me James Bond. Now there's a mouthful. 2002 sees the release of the 20th James Bond movie. So you live to die another day. Hitting cinema screens around the world this winter, Pierce Brosnan stars in his fourth outing as 007 in Die Another Day. Bond is one of the most successful film franchises ever. With the first release in 1962, 007 has come a long way. And it's good to know that there's one number you can always rely on. MTV was exclusively invited onto the set of Die Another Day. And we got to hang out with Pierce Brosnan, director Lee Tamahori, and the cast and crew on location in London. It's good. Sunday? Buck house behind us? Nothing prepares you really for actually being on set with James Bond. Every guy's dream is to be Bond, but uh, the second best is definitely being a Bond villain, so I'll make do with that. It's a spring day in 2002. The peace and calm outside London's most famous landmark Buckingham Palace is disturbed by the 4 a.m. arrival of the 007 film unit. got a three camera set this morning and they've got to get off the truck rather quickly and get set up to get this early morning shot. The caterers are already hard at work preparing breakfast for the 250 strong cast and crew that will be working here today. Get up six o'clock, straight into the clothes, pick the script up, into the car, make up, hair, read the newspapers, wait around. If it's an action sequence, then it takes its time. Today's shooting schedule is under massive time pressure. It includes a complex parachute stunt, helicopters, wire work, and two pages of dialogue. This would usually take two whole days to shoot, but because of the location, the crew must be wrapped by lunchtime. We're gonna be out of here uh, either changing the guard, and then we have some more uh, work to do in Green Park. It'll be a busy day. We have very strict limits here to shoot uh, Toby. Gustav Graves coming in on the parachute here. We have uh, the helicopters loaded up, ready to take off at 6.15, be here for 6.30 jump. We have to have that crane and all of us have to be clear from this area by 1.30. So we have a very tough schedule today. Come on. Total pressure today, yeah. Well, four o'clock start did not, but uh, now the sun's out, we're in a nice day room. Permission to film outside Buckingham Palace doesn't come easy, and the man responsible for making it happen is the location manager. Since what's been happening over the recent months with um, people not being around, members of the royal family that have sadly passed away, there's been a very tight security around the area that we're actually in now. We're very lucky to get this position where we are here. It'll make the day go smoother. Everyone understands that, and it'll mean we'll get out of their hair earlier, and that means that the day will be achieved. The 007 unit also needed to ensure that they were allowed to have a helicopter hovering above the Queen's bedroom for the parachute stunts. To fly a helicopter within one kilometre of Buckingham Palace, you've got, to, you've got to get very special permissions from anti-terrorist units and all protection squads. Now, they've all obviously been in place and helped us achieve this this morning, along with um, Civil Aviation Authority. We're in the London flight zone here, which is a approach area to Heathrow, and to have a helicopter in one second position there is obviously quite strange for them, and, and obviously with aviation at the moment, it's sensitive point as well. Apparently there might be some people watching us now from um, anti-terrorist units and um, war protection squad, supposedly, from higher positions. Static points. Here we go. See ya. The stunt coordinators are also hard at work making sure that safety is paramount for the jumpers. I think they're coming from a couple thousand feet, you know, 2,500 feet is what I think they're coming from. And there's no wind, so... It's good, they can land in any direction. In front of Buckingham Palace, it's great. Perfect, perfect. With the crew standing by Buckingham Palace, the pilot at Pinewood still has to secure final clearance for the flight. Good morning, Heathrow. 
The helicopter is piloted by Mark Wolf, a Vietnam veteran and stunt pilot on eight previous Bond films. Uh, we do the first one, then we, we film it, and they reset the cameras, and then we wait five minutes, and then they do another one. The pals know about it. God knows about it, I think. Okay, thank you, sir. Cheers. The three stuntmen must be made to look like the latest Bond villain, Gustav Graves. Yeah, go ahead. Pass the and helicopter's taking off. With the clock ticking, the cameras are ready to roll when the helicopter arrives at Buckingham Palace. The three stuntmen give the crew three chances to get the shot perfect. There is no room for mistakes. Okay, stand by, shoot next time. Chopper's coming in, chopper's coming in. And here we go. Three, two, one. Out of the way, out of the way. Jumpers away, jumpers away. That was the aerial unit, planning to say that they uh, got amazing footage of our double coming across Buckingham Palace over the House of Parliament, the Thames glittering in the background. It's gone really well. It's been absolutely fantastic. Congratulations. Well done. Thank you very Top much. Down. Thank yeah. you very Even this looks good. Did it? <laughs> <laughs> very good. You got the flight? Oh, it's fantastic. No, no, it was excellent. Yeah, very excellent. Good. Yeah. So, I, couldn't, I couldn't imagine uh, you could drop them on a dime like that. Oh, it's really strange wind conditions, but it's it? nice. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. We're going to get a chance to do this again, will we? No, no at all. <laughs> What's it like from up there? This is one for like, oh, just see Buckingham the Palace and the statue yeah, yeah, and everything from there. Fantastic. The visuals are fantastic. Yeah, yeah. No, that okay. really was a treat. Well done. Thanks a lot. The jump was a success, but Lee chooses to go for one more for safety. Stand by then, please. Are you ready? Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, uh, we're ready to come in. Okay, five, four, three, two, one. Action! we got a time frame on us here at Buckingham Palace and we've got to keep moving on. I'd shoot three jumpers but we just can't afford the time so it's better to move on. We got it on the first one. The first one was fantastic. The second one we just cover ourselves. Third guy unfortunately. Too bad we need the time. We've got to get out of here by 9.30. Get off this beast so we now start putting Toby in here and better shoot this. But this will take longer than the jumpers strangely enough. So, you know, better to use the time the way we've got it. Move on. Then we've got to be behind these gates by 10 to just keep boxing on. And you guys are taking up valuable time so get the hell out of here. That's it, they've got two jumps, they've got everything they wanted. The third jump is still in the aircraft. He's waiting to go, he's going to be upset that he didn't jump. This scene is the, the entrance of my character into the film, and he's being knighted in the, in the film, and he's parachuting in to uh, Buckingham Palace. Probably to avoid the traffic, I don't know. Toby knows how to fire the parachute now and freaked him up. So <laughs> he's got to do it justice. Wardrobe must make sure that his suit matches the stuntman and can cope with the stresses put on it by the actor and the wire work. He's wearing one of seven Dolce & Gabbana suits, which the first of two we were able to buy in the shop and the rest they had to make for us, which they very kindly did. And he's wearing Prada shoes, which there are, I don't know how many, several, several pairs of. His suit has to come in several sizes. There's quite a bit of protection concealed underneath. Well, my job doesn't just stop with the clothes. In the end, you become involved in the weapons, you know, the bags, the stuff they carry. And today, we've had to have this uh, parachute harness made with really cool black nylon straps and everything. The dummy version of the real parachute we jumped, um, but it's modified in a way that it's a very quick release, so that the actor then can just step out of it nice and quickly. He has to look super smart, and yet at the same time, be able to be flown on a parachute. 
In this scene, Gustav is aided by his mysterious and beautiful assistant, Miranda Frost. This guy just coming into land over there is my boss, Gustav Grace, who's the main villain of the piece. At least he thinks I'm his assistant, but I'm actually a uh, MI6 secret agent. She is a Bond girl, you know, Miranda Frost is a Bond girl, and there's going to be a Bond girl forevermore, but, you know, I'm going to step out of her shoes at the end of the film. I think I'll always have played a Bond girl, but, you know, I'm not one. Not forever and a day. You know, it's a label you're proud to carry. I mean, look at <laughs> look who've gone before. Toby's character, Gustav Graves, must now face the world's press as he walks towards his waiting cars in a complex dialogue scene that took nearly 20 takes. Okay, here we go. Watching the skies. Here he comes. Back in action. Eddie's coming in. Doing a turn. Right over. Buckingham Palace. Coming down. Coming towards you. Ten feet. Six feet. Three. Touching down. Coming towards you. Go. What a wonderful day to become a knight. Will you be using your title, Mr. Graves? Ah, you know me. I'm proud of my adopted nation, but I never stand on ceremony. I cut it. Go again. Right, see you ready. Bye, guys. A wonderful day to become a knight. Will you be using your title, Mr. Blake? Ah, you know me. I'm proud of my adopted nation, but I never stand on ceremony. After an entrance like that, you can't be surprised you've been called a self-publicizing adrenaline junkie, can you? Can you do it again? Adrenaline junkie, can you? I prefer the term adventurer. Having made the deadline for filming outside Buckingham Palace, the unit moves inside the gates of Green Park to continue the scene, and Pierce Brosnan arrives at the set to shoot his part of the action. They jumped and the shoot opened. All's good. It's an easy shoot for Pierce today. With no dialogue, all he's required to do is hang out in the background. <laughs> I'm lurking in the background. Um, Bond is kind of, he's, he's a renegade in this movie. And uh, Toby is this entrepreneurial fellow who parachutes in over Buckhouse and uh, I've just come back into the country and I'm trying to find a lead on who this guy is. And really, the scene's about Toby, but in the background is Bond. Ding, 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 as the filming progresses, crowd numbers are swelling by the minute. The bonus of catching a glimpse of 007 at work is proving very attractive to the tourists and a few members of the press as well. Whenever a Bond film shoots on location, especially in a major place like this, we are to expect press. And uh, parachutes coming out of the sky are going to attract them. And my guess is that within, within an hour from now, this place will be full of the national press photographers and reporters. And good luck to you. With 45 minutes of shooting time left, Lee is feeling the pressure. We've been hearing rumours about the Icarus space programme. What's the big secret? It's not a secret, it's a surprise. But don't worry, you'll soon be enlightened. Aren't you trying out for a place for the British Olympic fencing team? We hear you haven't been playing at all. Sorry. Jesus Christ. Don't say sorry. Just keep on going. Okay, okay we go again. Number one, three, two, one. He must now get the last scene of the day shot and the unit out of the location to ensure Her Majesty's pleasure. You only get one shot at life. Why waste it on sleep? Why don't you try and out for a place for the British Olympic and training team? One more, please. Okay. One more. Print that one night. One more, please. Mr. Graves, aren't you trying out for a place on the British Olympic fencing team? We hear you've been training furiously. Oh, I never get furious. As they say in fencing, what's the point? All right, thank you very much, everybody, but we don't want to keep Her Majesty waiting. Mr. Graves! Please, Mr. Graves! Okay, that's a wrap, everybody. Thank you very much. Well, then, you can have some lunch now.
So, that's it. A day in the life of James Bond. It had stunts, cars, gadgets, and bomb babes. All the essential ingredients. There really is no such thing as an average day for the traveling circus that is the 007 film unit. But there was one big surprise today. They wrapped 10 minutes early. Sun shone, unlike in Cadiz, where we were filming Cuba. It's a very good day. Buckingham Palace turned it on, and uh, who would have thought? I was expecting the rain, but no, it was a, it was a smashing day. A bit clear up now. About, about two hours clearing up. See the trucks out, which is very tight to get them in. The trailer's been the main thing. Fears this trailer, obviously, the size of it, the cane. And I'm um, just making sure it's, it's how, how we found the place, really. Everybody's very happy, the police included. I want to get off home now, and I've um, gone very well.